joined here with Jeff of the band The Newsboys. How are you doing today, Jeff? Hey, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you. You know, you guys are going to be in town May 6th for the God Loves You Tour with Franklin Graham and the Billy Graham Evangelical Association. You guys already in set for that uh, that six, uh, I think, what, six stops on that tour? Yeah, six shows in a row all on the East Coast, kind of close to D.C. and the, the Northeast there. And we're really excited about it. You know, we've got a really long history with the the billy graham association that goes back probably 30 years or more i mean i remember back in the early 90s you know when the organization was you know kind of getting older and everyone was kind of wondering about the the future of it um it was it was the grams that really took a chance on getting more like modern music into their events and with DC talk and a lot of their big events and newsboys playing quite a few of those back in the day. And, and they always welcomed us in with open arms because they knew that there was uh, another generation coming, you know? And um, so, yeah, it's, that's a relationship that's been there for many years and, it's cool. We go out and we do these shows, you know, we set up outside, they're free. Anybody can come and uh, we put on, you know, a top notch show and uh, it's great for families. So come on out. I mean, uh, the weather's supposed to be beautiful. Spring is here. So uh, it should be, should be a really great run. Yeah. And the weather here in Hampton roads has just been fantastic right now. Um, so hopefully it, it holds through uh, <laughs> to the 6th of May there, and we had a, we have a fantastic night. Unfortunately, I hate to tell you this, but I'm actually, I have to be back home in Pennsylvania myself that night. My mom's <laughs> getting married that weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was, I was sitting there, and they, I found out the date, and then I was like, but, well, I, I can't say no, Mom. So unfortunately, I'm going to miss you guys, but... <laughs> A lot of our audience and a lot of our listeners are so excited that the Newsboys are going to be in town in, in Portsmouth with Billy Graham at uh, the Billy Graham Association with Franklin Graham yeah. who's going to be teaching. Um, locally, there's a lot of hype for it. And now you've been with the Newsboys since the early mid 90s. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to 30 years here, which is just insane. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It is. And you've pretty much been there for all the big hits you've had a part in that you know when it comes to songwriting and and performing kind of mixing all that what goes into it you know is how how do you guys do that it looks like a lot of collaboration inside the group it is it takes a, a close knit of a uh, team of people over many years a lot of trust uh you know the music industry is a it's an interesting industry because um it's not like other industries, you know, people expect you to, to put out quality work all the time. And it's almost like you have to reapply for your job every year or two, you know, where, where, where people, you know, especially now more than ever, where people's attention spans are so short and they just gobble up content. Like it's, and if you don't like something, it's just the next thing. It's just a swipe away. It's not really how it was when we grew up and we would like, dig into a record and, and get invested in that so you know the times change and we're putting out new music you know pretty much every two months uh instead of you know waiting every two years to put out a record we're kind of starting to give people something every few months so we just put out a song at easter called he lives and um, we've got a lot of new material in the works um you know and covid was kind of a part of that gave us a lot of free time at home that <laughs> we didn't think that we were going to have you know um kind of for two years there we were uh we were living more of a life at home than on the road which was kind of weird for us as a band that's toured for so many decades so there's been a lot of songwriting and now that's that stuff is starting to come out and uh yeah it's 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 a real promising uh time ahead you know we we just wrapped up a tour in the spring where we went out and played uh a show shows where it was just us like there was no opening act and we would just go out and play for two or three hours and just cover all the material from all those years and 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 it was just a lot of fun so that's 
something we're going to continue on here for the rest of the year. Not on the Franklin Graham shows, obviously, because right. time is limited. But um, yeah, so that's what we've been up to, and it's uh, it's been good to be be back at it. It's interesting that you you bring up a few of that. You know, obviously COVID put everyone at home. You could not tour. Some people had to get creative and and you know do stuff digitally at home. And but now we're seeing the fruit of all these songwriters who were told you can't tour you have to be at home and so what i've seen is a lot of songwriters and artists just went pen to paper and now we have all these albums coming out and these songs coming out that were born during the pandemic um you also mentioned the you know going out and playing two three hours just a a We'll say solo tour, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's just the one band. We had a band just come through, a uh, Christian band that did that. And I'm sure that's exciting. Um, we got to experience the former lead singer of the Newsboys, Peter Furler, came through. Um, oh, nice. Almost, almost undercover. <laughs> we didn't realize it till the last second that he was coming through. Um so we got to experience kind of those things where you get a lot of the catalog being played. And uh, obviously you have newer fans that know more of the new music and not so much the old music. So do right. you see where like the newer fans hear the old music and are like, wow, that's that's all like maybe you guys play Love Liberty Disco or something. Right. Right. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because it is starting to happen where uh, a lot of younger fans who know who we are and know we've been around for a little while, we'll kind of dig back into the older stuff and are kind of blown away. And actually a great example of that would be my own kids because my oldest daughter is 13 and a half. She's going on 14. And so she's, you know, grew up with me and kind of has known, you know, all those records and all those years, but I'll catch her on Spotify going back and listening to songs like breakfast and take me to your leader and all those and they love love liberty disco record that's like their favorite record they um they they just can't believe it that you know all that music existed so it is kind of a cool thing i mean and like what you said it's true you you do get a lot of people that come to the concerts for different reasons from different eras from all different walks of life all different ages i mean it's very uh, common to see in meet and greets and stuff like three generations of fans all there of the same family that all love the band for different reasons and i think it's cool i mean there's not a lot of christian artists that can say that and um you know i i think in the past christian music has not been great about honoring its legacy and its history you know i think you ask an average Christian music fan or somebody who, who listens to the radio, like, oh, what were the popular acts of the in Christian music in the 70s or 80s? They probably wouldn't be able to mention very many. But if you did, if you said the same thing for mainstream music, you could just go endlessly mention artists. So hopefully, you know, our industry can do a better job of like just honoring its legacy a, a bit more. And I think we're starting to see that because a lot of these bands that you know, a lot of people are interested in bands that were around in the 90s because they just can't believe that there was a Christian music industry that was so diverse and so crazy. I mean, you had an, anything from like heavy metal to Carmen to it was just so vast. And I think now it's so not that way that we, uh, we had that their Christian ska era, too. In the oh, early 2000s. it's endless. Yeah. And all the labels and all the all the small regional radio stations like, you know, you what you guys do was so much more like fun and i feel like there's a lot of people that can't believe that time even existed and they're interested in it again so that it's been a lot of fun for us to to go through that yeah and you're absolutely i mean you're you're <laughs> there's so much information that goes into this this conversation because you're right there is i grew up in the the 90s right so i grew up listening and loving you know, the newsboys, Michael W. Smith, Stephen Curtis Chapman, you know, you get that whole group yeah. of people. And coming in my teenage years with bands like Stellar Cart, that that whole ska time. I know we got right. Adam now playing with right. the newsboys, a great addition. Yeah. Um, how has that worked? Because he's not the only member change that you've experienced in your time. You've had a few where the band has it, it's evolved, 
Sure. Um, Michael Tate's now the lead singer. You've had other changes. Um, how was that work when you're in that band? Because a lot of bands can't handle that type of pressure of change. Well, it kind of made sense for us for a few reasons. Um, you know, obviously Tate's been with us for like 13 or 14 years now, which is crazy because that is longer than he was than DC Talk even ever existed. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of gives some context to it. But with Adam, he is a he's been a friend of ours for so long, like over we've known him for over 20 years. He toured with us with Stellar Card. He toured with us with Audio Adrenaline. And then he had toured with us as a solo artist and also had done speaking on our tours and worked for some some of the child relief organizations that, that were on the road with us as sponsors. And so um, we also would do private shows with Michael or whatever. And Adam was always, you know, like the, the extra acoustic guitar guy or, you know, whatever, when we would do stuff like that. So you know, going out to do these longer shows, like we talked about, it just made sense, you know, because there's only four of us in the band. So we don't have a physical bass player. We haven't had one in a long time. So it was kind of like, man, this would make a lot of sense to add another vocalist, another player, a great utility guy who's already one of our best friends. Um, yeah. It just seemed like a no, no brainer at this, at this point. So it's been awesome, you know, and Adam's a, a, a great writer. He just wrote, um, Promised Land for Toby. That was the song he wrote. So he's got a lot of experience. He's a similar age as us. You know, it's just similar vibe as us. It kind of just, it wasn't really like adding anyone because he was already around all the time anyway. <laughs> right. So I know for a lot of people on the outside looking in, they're going, they're adding someone. And, and right. I think I even saw in the comment people were asking, like, well, who left? And it's yeah. like, no one left. No one. We're adding no. to the group. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And it's, uh, you know, we're not getting any younger. So those three hour shows, we got a little bit of support there. <laughs> yeah. And the three hour show, I mean, us as a fan sitting in the seat or as much as little as we sit in the seats during a lot of those concerts is can wear on us. I can only imagine, you know, I watch artists now in a different light since I've been in radio and watching fans on stage. I'm just like, how do they have, how do they do it? Yeah. You know, the truth is that, um, the show is the is the fun part of these jobs, you know, and I think that's the part that people see. They see you on stage playing and uh, they don't realize all the other stuff that artists have to go through to get to the stage. You know, it's all the being away from your family, it's trying to sleep in a tour bus every night that's rolling down the road and all the other crazy logistics and risky things we have to go through to to tour. Uh, when you finally get through all the other stuff and you get on stage, you know, that's that's the whole reason we do all the other stuff is so that we can play. So for me, I love it. I I have no problem playing as long as we want to play. Uh, it's funny because a lot of fans are like, how do you remember all the songs? Sometimes some of these shows are like 30 songs. I'm like, I don't it's just in there. <laughs> it's just in there. It's been in there for it, a long time. It's just second nature. <laughs> it is. Um, it, and a question I like to ask a lot of people is, you know, because we are in that that Christian industry, that Christian music, Christian radio industry. So there's a different element when it comes to the bands and the writers and radio. And, and that is we're all believers of Jesus. Right. Yeah. We all follow God. So how how do you guys how do you stay grounded while you're on tour, maybe on some of these longer tours where you're not with, you know, Franklin Graham? But the longer tours, how do you guys stay grounded in, into the word and remind yourself that almost that that servant mentality? Yeah. Oh, it's, um, you know, I think if you're in a band of people and you have that kind of trust and friendship for a long time and those relationships for a long time, um, you know, there it's almost like a family kind of thing. You know, you're stuck in a tour bus. You're with 12 other guys for three months. And everybody knows everything about everybody. And it's almost like a family, you know, you, you, there's a respect between all of us where we, you know, want to stay true to the mission of why we're in this thing to begin with. And, you know, we're older guys, we're married, we've got kids, you know, when I, when I come home off the road or if my wife comes to a show, you know, she's 
pretty brutally honest. She's like, I don't know about that or this or this song or that, or maybe you should wear something different. Or <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like uh they know who we really are. You know, it's easy, it's easy to go up on stage and have everybody clap at you and love your music and blah blah blah. But it's a lot harder to be a good father. Um, you know, that's the easy stuff, uh, to get home and be a good dad and provide for your family and all those things. That's real life. And, you know, people think that just because you have some level of success or fame or whatever they think that you're just immune to all the world's problems. And it's so not true. I mean, we deal with all the same stuff that anyone else does. We're all human beings. You know, we all have families with issues and kids with issues and, and uh, health and whatever else, you know, we're, we're all humans. We all live on this earth. But I think that the cool thing about our jobs that we love so much is that um, what we get to do actually does serve people and it helps them and it, it empowers them. And, uh, you know, because we live in a in a world that's, you know, it's dark. It is really dark. And it's not, you know, it's not getting any better <laughs> by the day. And uh, it's it's ridiculous, actually. And I think if people need need the gospel and and to hear truth now more than ever, and you know, it's offensive to people. Even on this tour we're about to do, it's you know, there's a lot of things about the gospel that are offensive to people, and uh, and there's a there's spiritual battles that are going on right now. If you you know, if it's not, if it's not obvious now, I don't I don't know what it would take to um to make that clear to people so it's the times we live in you know and uh but we we know that god's word never changes and his promises never change and so um and really on this tour it's it's it, you know it's called the god loves you tour and um and that's the point of it is to just to tell people that uh it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter what you've done that um uh, you know, God's forgiveness and his love and his acceptance is always there, which is really hard to believe because I think we live in a in a world that we're just so quick to just shut people down or cancel them or hate them or whatever it may be. And it's like, no, no, this is not, that's not what the gospel is. You know, it's different than that. And here's why. And so um, those are the kind of things that keep you going for 30 years. You know, if it was just about us trying to, you know, chase success, that only leads to nothing, you know, and so that's, that explains, you know, the longevity between us all. That's awesome. And I'm, again, really excited for you guys coming into town. I'm excited for everyone that's going to be able to be at the event, the God Loves You Tour. We all do need forgiveness. This is a crazy time, but, you know, we both believe, I know we, we share this belief that God is still in control, even mm -hmm. through all the mess and the craziness. And, um, I, you know, we thank you so much for the music you guys have pro provided and produced, you know, uh, we know it's uh, an act of love <laughs> to do that. And there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into what you do. So um, super excited. May 6th, you guys will be at the Atlantic Bank Pavilion in Portsmouth for the God Loves You Tour with Franklin Graham. Jeff, thank you so much for joining me on today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. We'll see you guys soon. All right.